Welcome back. Well, history buffs and foodies are finally uniting under one roof. A new California business is selling presidential inspired milkshakes. Jimmy Carter's peanut butter, his family's peanut farmers, JFK's mint chip, he's Irish Catholic, so kind of something fun to tie into it. Kelly Boyles, who you just heard there, is the owner of Milk Cow Shakes, or as she likes to call herself, the first lady of the business. Milk Cow Shakes opened its doors in Sacramento this morning in true presidential fashion on Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Each milkshake is named after a U.S. president, and there's a little history lesson behind every flavor. I love that idea. I wish I lived closer so I'd go check it out. Exactly. Or maybe we need to open a business like that here. I think that would work. I like history <laughs> and I like milkshakes. So. Maybe we can name a milkshake after our uh, resident from Southwest Missouri, Governor Mike Parson. There you go. Uh, a Parson shake. Yeah, we have to find out what he likes so we can figure out the flavor there. Oh, yeah. Like that. Well, here's a new Valentine's treat for you this week if you prefer non dairy options. Speaking of ice cream. <laughs> yes, Ben and Jerry's have released a new vegan friendly alternative to ice cream. The ice cream company adding a vegan option to an iconic flavor that we all love, chocolate chip cookie dough. Now dessert lovers of many diets can enjoy one of the brand's most popular creations. The chain is also launching a new non-dairy chocolate caramel cluster flavor as well. Both products mm. are made with almond milk based ice cream and you can find the pints for sale in grocery stores nationwide. That is a good alternative. Yes it is. Very tasty stuff. Well, you saw the show right before we came on the air tonight at 9. Latoya Jackson is the masked singer. Yes, yeah, so she was the alien tonight, uh -huh. and the judges were talking about it, trying to figure out who she was. And someone said Paula Abdul, and one of the judges was like, that was definitely not Paula. I've seen her perform. I don't think that's her. So now we know yes. it was Latoya Jackson. My guesses were way off, not even close yeah. at all. <laughs> it's, not close. it's really hard. It is. So the singing show has captivated millions, including us here in the newsroom now. The executive producer of the show, Craig Plesta, says a North Korean show is what inspired him to recreate the masked singer here in the U.S. Everyone was watching it. I turned around, I saw it. It was like flypaper for me. It was different. And, and I gravitate toward things that are fresh and non derivative. So when I saw that, I thought there's something here. Craig says the clues the contestants give throughout the show are key to solving who is behind the mask, but sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes it's still confusing. Yes, it is. It can be tough. And they are already planning for season two, as you heard. And the contestant wish list is a little higher. Plestis said, still be, speaking of presidents, he'd love to have former President Barack Obama on the show. And it might be, it might be an unrealistic goal, but yeah. I would like to see it because I would like to see what song the former president would sing. I know. Yeah, that'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah. And that, there you go. There's a whole security department just to make sure that no one will ever find out who the singers are as they're coming in for rehearsals and all that good stuff. Yeah, they take it seriously. It's, it's a very interesting show. Yeah. I'm hooked now. Now I got to find out what's going to happen next <laughs> Check week. Check it out if you can. <laughs> we'll be back with more.